Well, welcome to our Eucharist this morning. Uh, The church is empty apart from me, and so um, I welcome you from your own homes. Um, When we come to the communion, obviously, I will be receiving, and I will be receiving on behalf of everybody. Uh, And so we will have our act of spiritual communion within this service. And now we meet in God's name. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. So we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sanctified himself for us to purify a people as his own. Now let us confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, We have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand, if you're able, for the uh, Gloria. Now we pray. 
Eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your Son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit, grant to us who are born again by water and the Spirit that we may be faithful to our calling as your adopted children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now I'm going to highlight Eileen. There we are. Our first reading is from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, commencing at verse 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness overcame the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And the darkness he called night. And there was evening. And there was morning. The first day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now Mary will read the second reading. The second reading is from Acts, chapter 19, verses 1 to 7. While Apollos was in Corinth, Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptised? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptised with a baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptised in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether there were about twelve of them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now our next hymn is On Jordan's Bank, the Baptist's cry. Announces that the Lord is nigh.
Now I invite you to stand for our gospel reading. And our gospel comes from the gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 1. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptised by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Amen. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. But if you haven't already, please do sit down. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So starts the first uh, creation story. And it is worth uh, bearing in mind that to the Israelites at that time, the earth was a flat disk. And over the earth was the dome of the heavens. And within the heavens, that dome, was set the sun and the moon and the stars. And they moved over the face of the dome. And outside the dome were the waters that represented chaos. So a translation more accurate to that early Hebrew thought might be, uh, bearing in mind, of course, that to, to them, um, the, the, the disk of the earth, and the dome of the heavens was the entirety of God's creation. So a more accurate translation might be, in the beginning, God created the entire universe. And it was a dark, gaseous void. And the spirit of God moved through the chaos. You know what, that's not a bad description of the early universe. Uh, before the first stars ignited. It only took science two and a half thousand years to catch up. We believe that the scriptures are inspired by the Holy Spirit, but that inspiration is interpreted and filtered by the understanding and the imagination of those who wrote them down. I do still find it remarkable that the process of creation as set out in the days of Genesis uh, do so closely resemble our understanding of the process of evolution. Having said that, the writer of Genesis is not really interested in setting out a historical record of creation, so much as setting out the foundations for God's relationship with his creation. The story continues. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. 
and God saw that the light was good. Then God separated the light from the darkness. Now, why did God separate the light from the darkness? Well, I have prepared a picture for this morning and uh, I've taken a long time over it, so I hope you can appreciate the artwork. So here it is. It's a white cat in the snow. Uh, he has his eyes closed. I hope you appreciate it. I did another one as well, just in case that wasn't enough. This is a black cat at night. He's got his eyes closed as well. You see, if everything is all light, or everything is all dark, we can't see anything. But if you separate the light from the dark, well, you get the picture. There is here a fundamental principle of God's creation. The whole of creation, including our own lives, is a patchwork of light and darkness. And I'm not talking about good and evil here. I'm talking about our, our uh, perception, our experience of God's creation. Hot and cold, wet and dry, love and hate, sweet and bitter, happy and sad. But you know what? I would rather live in a world where I could um, bask in the heat of the summer sun, even if it means shivering on a cold winter's day, rather than live in a world that is uniformly tepid, tepid weather and tepid food and tepid drink and tepid relationships. I would rather live in a world where people are passionate, passionate about the things that they like and passionate about the things that they do not like, rather than live in a world where nobody cares about anything or anybody. Imagine a world where there is no bitter or sweet or sour or salt, where food is just bland. Imagine a world where there is no sensation, where there is no pleasure and no pain, but just a universal numbness. But why can't we live in a world where everything is sweet? and warm and bright and happy and loving and good and kind. The trouble is it can't work that way. Partly because um, if everything was light, we would not see anything and we would grow to hate that light. For another, you can't separate the two. Love and grief are two sides of the same coin. You cannot have one without the other. So the story continues. God called the light day and he called the dark night. This is still day one, remember. God is not going to create the sun, the moon and the stars until day four. So we're not talking here about night and day as we understand night and day. And it goes on. And there was evening and there was morning, the first day. Don't you think that's a peculiar way of putting it? There was evening and there was morning. 
Wouldn't it make more sense to say there was morning and there was evening, the beginning and the end, there is a day. There is a very good reason. Because if you say there was a beginning and there was an end, we are defining, we are limiting, we're saying this is the day and everything else is night. And we are used to thinking in terms of this. When we go out at night and we look at a street light, there's a little pool of light underneath it and everything else is dark. We have our torch and all we can see is a little circle of light in front of us and everything else is dark. And we look up at the moon or the stars and they're just a little bit of light in this great blackness. And with our technology and, and these virtual journeys out into space, we see our sun diminishing as a tiny little disk in the dark. But you see, that is not what the writer of Genesis says. It is not that the day is this little isolated patch in the darkness of night. No, the, more, the day, there is evening and there is morning. It is the darkness, it is the light that is limited. We are used to thinking of night and day as a linear thing, because we tie night and day with time, and our experience of time is linear. But if you look at a globe from space, or the world from space, and you look at an island, if you're living on the island, you think that the ocean is limited by the land. But you look at it from space, you see that no, the land is limited by the ocean. The land does not limit the ocean. Darkness is limited by the light. Now in this season, season of Epiphany, we celebrate Jesus as the light of the world. But Jesus is not a little candle in an orange with a darkened church, charming and Precious though that is, Jesus is a noonday sun chasing away the shadows. Jesus is an ocean of light, limiting the darkness. And we can sometimes get it into our heads that the world is a dark place and the world has to shine this torch out into the darkness. But that's not what scripture says. Paul says, when the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Jesus is an ocean of light and the darkness will not overcome it. John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. And Jesus did not need to come to John to be baptized uh, to, as a sign of repentance. Jesus' baptism was something different. Jesus' baptism was a revelation, was God's revelation, God's unveiling of Jesus as his son. And God said, you are my son, with you I am well pleased. In other words, God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. Amen. So let us declare our faith together in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now Anne is going to uh, lead us in our prayers of intercession. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. <clears throat> Almighty God, we thank you for your gifts of creation and your Holy Spirit. And as we look forward into a new year, help us to keep you as our focus and to continue to praise you and bring our concerns to you. For you are a faithful God who will always hear our prayers. <clears throat> and so we bring to you the church, the world and all people. We pray for the body of Christ throughout the world. And this morning in our cycle of prayer, we bring to you the Archdeaconry of Tunbridge, our Archdeacon, Julie, Con Julie Connolty, and all the clergy and parishes within her care. We also pray for the Anglican Church in Aotearoa, New Zealand and Polynesia, and its mission to proclaim the good news of the kingdom, to teach, baptise and nurture the new believers, to respond to human needs by loving service, to seek to transform unjust structures of society, to challenge violence of every kind, to pursue peace and reconciliation, and to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation and sustain and renew the life of the earth. <clears throat> As we remember the baptism of Christ this morning, we pray that all who have subsequently been baptised into his name may keep the cov covenant they and we have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Saviour. And we ask that we will all be open to your spirit of unity so that Christ's love might be recognised in the way that we love one another within this church and within the wider family of God. We remember our local churches and our own efforts towards unity. <clears throat> Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Spirit of God, your will is to draw people ever closer in community with you and with each other. We remember places and people divided by circumstance, prejudice, misunderstanding and fear, praying that your spirit of peace, joy and love will restore creation and all people. We pray for peace in the Middle East, for Syria, for Iraq, Afghanistan. And we pray also for Yemen, Somalia, Nigeria, and all places throughout the world where people face violence and terrorism, poverty and homelessness. We pray for the people of Hong Kong, for those who protested against the enforcing of tyrannous rule and for the democracy and freedom that they were promised, 
and who are now facing arrest and prison because of their struggles. We pray for the United States of America, where we see civil unrest and disturbance as divisions, social, political and racial, deepen further and hatred and distrust abound. We pray that as a new administration begins, there might be a lessening of tensions, that those who are in positions of leadership, whatever their political allegiance, will come together to heal the wounds that have been inflicted and strive to build their country up in tolerance and justice. And we pray for the leaders of all nations, for wisdom of thought and boldness of action, to help bring about the cessation of hostilities and a fair and lasting peace for all people. Lord, in your mercy. At this time of rising coronavirus infections in our country and throughout the world, Father, we pray to you for those who have become ill or are facing a long period of recovery. We ask for your protection on all who are vulnerable or shielding and for staff in our hospitals, our GP surgeries and our local care homes. We ask your peace for those who are anxious or who are suffering with their mental health. We pray for our children and young people who are facing so much disruption in their lives and are worrying what the future will bring for them. For our younger children, whose worlds have been turned upside down, who are not able to go to school at the time when their education is just developing, who cannot play with their friends or go out to parks and adventure centres, who cannot see members of their wider families and who struggle to understand why this is happening. For our teenagers and young people at vital time in their education, whose exams have been cancelled, who ask what it is they are striving for, who do not know how they will find their way in a world that puts so much value on educational achievement whose social lives are severely limited, just at the time when they need to mix and to find their place in society and within their peer groups. We pray for all who do not have proper access to computers or laptops and for whom learning online is a continual and ongoing struggle. For those who are trapped in an abusive or neglectful home and do not know where to turn for help. Father, we trust in your love, but find it difficult to understand why all this is happening. Give us courage, kindness, and hope for ourselves and all around us. Lord, in your mercy. God of love, we pray for any who are ill or suffering from a chronic or terminal illness especially those who have had vital surgery or treatment postponed, and for all who have asked us for prayers. May they know your love and compassion in the care of those around them, and may they find relief for their suffering. We pray for those who give their time and energy to help others. We thank you for the work of volunteers and all who go beyond the call of duty to help those in your care, in their care. Lord, in your mercy. God of mercy, we pray for all who have recently died, especially all whom we knew and loved, and for those whose anniversaries are at this time of year. May they find rest from the sufferings of this life and peace in your presence. We ask you to comfort all who mourn, and pray that they will find hope in the promises of your son, Jesus Christ, who died and rose again. Lord, in your mercy. To your care and protection, O Lord, we commit ourselves and all those for whom we have prayed. Of your goodness, forgive us. With your love, inspire us. By your spirit, guide us. And in your mercy, keep us. 
now and always. Amen. Almighty Lord, hear our prayer and fulfill your purposes in us as you accomplished your will in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now I invite you to stand. Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And I'm going to switch to gallery view. You might like to do the same. And I invite you to share a sign of peace with uh, your family. Peace with you all. And our next hymn is This is the Truth Sent from Above. is here his spirit is with us lift up your hearts we lift them to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right to give thanks and praise all honor and praise be yours always and everywhere 
mighty creator, ever living God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For at this time we celebrate your glory made present in our midst. In the coming of the Magi, the King of all the world was revealed to the nations. In the waters of baptism, Jesus was revealed as the Christ, the Saviour sent to redeem us. In the water made wine, the new creation was revealed at the wedding feast. Poverty was turned to riches, sorrow into joy. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and say our joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to you, saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share spiritually this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Thomas and all the saints, may praise you and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. 
God here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. Lord, though we must be apart, we can share in an act of spiritual communion with you and with one another. And so we pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given us, for all the pains and insults you have borne for us. Since we cannot now all receive you sacramentally, we ask you to come spiritually into our hearts. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly day by day. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, I am with you always. Be with us today as we offer ourselves to you. Hear our prayers for others and for ourselves, and keep us in your care. Amen. O oh God, help us to trust you. Help us to know that you are with us. Help us to believe that nothing can separate us from your love, revealed in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord of all time and eternity, you opened the heavens and revealed yourself as Father in the baptism of Jesus, your beloved Son. By the power of your Spirit, complete the heavenly work of our rebirth through the waters of the new creation, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And our closing hymn is Songs of Thankfulness and Prayer. So we say together a prayer for the church family. <clears throat> we are not people of fear, we are people of courage. 
We are not people who protect only our own safety. We are people who protect our neighbour's safety. We are not people of greed. We are people of generosity. We are your people, God, giving and loving wherever we are, whatever it costs, for as long as it takes, wherever you call us. Amen. Christ, the Son of God, perfecting you the image of his glory, and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and those you love, now and always. Amen. Strengthen us in the power of your Spirit, to live and work to your praise and glory, in the name of Christ. Amen.